Hello and welcome. My name is Ajax Post and today I'm bringing you a brand new game to the channel. Released on the 20th of July 2023, that's just a, a couple of weeks ago now in fact, uh, from Turnpoint Games, Train World is a new and addictive game that puts you in the driver's seat of a captivating railroad adventure. Build your train sets with a wide selection of locomotives and cars and transport various types of cargo and passengers across expansive maps spanning different regions and time periods. With a dynamic economy system, research capabilities and engaging tasks, Train World caters to strategic minds and creative thinkers who love the challenge of optimising logistics and building complex transportation networks. So yes, we're looking at another train game. It's not Transport Fever 2, it is only trains, uh, but before we actually get into it, of course, I do have to thank and heads up to Lana from Turnpoint Games for offering me a key to this to have a look at and share with you. The game has come from a very small team based in Kyiv in Ukraine. Some of the best indie games we see uh, come from a single mind with a vision and a purpose. And that single mind here is Dimitro, who spent over 10 years in game development. And a couple of years ago, he started working on this passion project. And he wanted to make one that solved a problem that always bothered him. Lack of space. Transport Fever 2 is sometimes criticised by having small maps. Even for those of us who play larger maps, I mean, I, I don't go to the mega maps, but some players do. Even so, things are a bit close together. That's not the case, as we'll see in Train World. This certainly does not have a lack of space. So why don't we stop talking about it? Let's get into the game itself and see what Train World looks like. Here we are, the main menu of Train World. Now, before we actually get into the game, let's have a quick poke at the settings, as I often like to do. Uh, basic game environment, that'll do, I suppose. <laughs> the language you want to use is a fair selection so far. Uh, units, uh, meters or feet. I I'm going to use meters. Yeah, that's odd for me to say, because I always like to keep things English. Um, but, uh, yeah. We'll keep it as meters. Auto saving, save intervals, I assume that is minutes. Uh, yeah, tips, I assume that is, I don't know what, is that tool tips? We shall see. Be nice if there was some little tool tip on the, on the settings tips. Thing. <laughs> yeah, you can say it too many times. Uh, so you knew exactly what these actually did. Uh, is that sort of assistant type helpers or is it tool tips on things which require further explanation? Controls. Now, this, oh, now okay, okay. I, we're not in the game yet, and I'm going to complain already, but we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> One thing that I had to change was the zoom, which I do on the mouse. It's on the mouse wheel, as you can see at the bottom of this screen at the moment. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, moving the mouse wheel forward zoomed out. Which I, 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 I Different games have different approaches to, to mouse wheel zooming. Uh, some do it that way, others do it the, the more logical way, to my, my way of thinking, which is move the scroll wheel back to zoom out. So that, I think, I, why I've selected invert zoom. Uh, speed, uh, that, that is a movement speed. Actually, I might want to take that down a bit, because the game sometimes can move a bit quickly for me. I'm a bit of a slow player, you know that. <laughs> uh, the cinematic camera, uh, speed there uh, I'll leave that as is we won't spend too much time at that movement WASD mouse wheel zooming there is a kind of right mouse drag and and sort of was well, rotate that's the word I'm looking for uh, but we'll see that as we get into the game uh, construction close panels escape and so on you can hide the interface I love that thank you very much as a uh, YouTube content creator uh, I like to have a way of creating beautiful screenshots without all the UI elements. Uh, UI obviously is very important. Now, complaining first, this is the pause. The pause key should always be, always be the space bar. I'm sorry, there's no excuse for that. Uh, I know there are a couple of other games that have the, uh, the back quote key or whatever you want to call it as the pause key. Yes, it's right next to one, but that still doesn't make it right, I'm sorry. Uh, and there is no option at the moment, certainly, to change these hotkeys. 
So yeah, my first complaint, I'm, I'm afraid, already is the pause. It has to be the space bar. There is no excuse for it not being that. Graphics, uh, we've got a variety of windowed or full screen. We can go up to 19, 20, 10, 80. So no 4K by the look of it, whatever that is. And various other things that you can set. The audio, unfortunately, as far as I can tell at the moment, the music is, isn't copyright free. So I'm not playing any of the in-game music underneath what I'm talking here, what, underneath while I'm talking here, uh, because I, I want to fully monetize the video. Yes, it's very selfish of me, I know, but there you go. And that's it, that's the settings. We'll leave it like that. So there is a tutorial in the game, which is, which is very useful. It's, I, I've only really played the Transport Fever franchise of games. I've not played things like Machinki or Railroad Corporation or Railway Empire, whatever they're called. Played Railroad Corporation and Empire a little bit, but not enough to be familiar with them. Uh, this game is quite different to Transport Fever 2, which is what I'm heavily invested in. Uh, so the tutorial is very necessary for people like me and to understand the basics of the games. It doesn't go too deep. It just takes you into the initial introduction to creating your first few station, your first couple of stations, understanding the map, that sort of thing. It's not very deep. It could be a bit better, but there's one good thing about it, which we'll see quite quickly. Right, let's get into a game, shall we? We'll start a new game. We do have a couple of new maps here. I think this Noran Island is new and the Great Lake is new. So these were released just after uh, the initial release of the game. So they've been added to it and the game has received a couple of small updates as well since its release on the 20th of July 2023. Uh, we're going to pick the small island for the moment, I think. But as you can see, they're, they're measured here in kilometres uh, and they go all the way from 33 by 33 up to 197. Mm, that's quite large, which is difficult to understand until you actually get in and play the game. So, yeah, take it from me, they are a bit large. Difficulty, I've no idea what these mean. It would be nice if there was some description of what the difficulty levels actually implied. Uh, I'm going to go comfortable, because I don't want to run out of money and be stuck halfway through an episode <laughs> and say, I can't do anything else. So we're going to go with comfortable. I'm going to go with the basic small island, Noran Island. At this point, I'm not aware of any workshop support. So I don't know if we can create our own islands, our own maps, rather, uh, and our own scenarios for the game. That would be nice. But again, working with, with a very small team working on the game, the, the likelihood of that is slightly less, perhaps, than you would for a, a big studio game. Anyway, let's crack on. Let's get into it. And here we are on our little island. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is pause it. I don't think I lose money through interest or anything at the moment. But just in case there's, there's any economy going on here which causes me to lose money if I don't spend it. Does that make sense? <laughs> so I'm going to pause the game to start with. So this is our map. It's region locked. And the only... This is different to when I played my first test. I was down here before. Oh, randomization. I kind of like that, actually. Um, as you can see, the, the map is large. Um, yes. <laughs> oh, there's a town. Well, it's more a village. It's San, San Francisco. Hmm. I don't think we can change. We can't change the names of the town. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Now, this is in a region. Uh, of Jacksonville, which is the capital of this region. We'll actually come back here a bit later, but I, I want to stay here just for a second. Uh, so what you do, you start in a region, uh, you build that up, and you research the ability to unlock other regions. That's how I think it works anyway. Uh, and let's have a quick look at research before we get going. So this is research here, this sort of light bulby thing. So we've got no points at the moment at all. And we can research from our current uh, starting era. We can get to another era, the industrial. Uh, we get to other regions. Where's the next one? There's region. E era three, rather. Modern era. Is that it? That's. Ooh, look at these funky 
electric, sleek train sets. But then there's nothing quite like the sheer magnificence of the power, the engineering of a steam locomotive is there. So we're going to start in that era. We don't have to complete all the modules within an era to move on to the next one. Uh, you, you, so you could leave all these little sort of side things off if we wanted to. As long as you complete this main thrust, you can get through to this next era. I think. I haven't actually got through to another era yet. And you gain research not through a laboratory of scientists, but through playing the game. So as you spend more time and get the game rolling, you'll earn research points naturally as you uh, as you progress. You might, might have noticed then a new task appeared here. They're not based on passage of time in the game. They're, they're based, as far as I can make out so far, on the amount of time elapsed in real time. Now, the re one of the reasons I didn't start doing anything immediately was because I wanted to wait for my first task to appear. Because they give you rewards. So this is a task list up here. San Francisco. Connecting... be nice if there's a tooltip on that, but that's okay. We'll see a tooltip in a second. San Francisco to Indianapolis. Uh, it's difficult on this map because this is, this is as far as we can zoom out. We can zoom right in. And the towns are paused. Now, if I have them running a little bit, they are a bit alive. Yeah, things are happening. Buggies are being drawn. <laughs> Is that the correct term? <laughs> being ridden, anyway. People are alive and moving in the towns. The map, otherwise, isn't terribly busy. It's a little bit lifeless. Um, and unlike Transport Fever 2, I'm... Yes, I'm going to I'm trying to find an industry. I'm not going to find one, am I? So we need to go to the region, the, the whole world map, which is either this icon at the top right here or M for map or tab for map. So this brings us here. So here we can see our main region. Yeah, when I played my first test, I was down here in this El Paso reason, region. So this is going to be a, bit of a challenge. I'm going to try how to do things differently here to what I tried in my test. So this is Jacksonville. If I right click on that, it tells me it has a population of 25,000. It requires two lime to make cement. And Denver apparently is supplying the lime. Now, if I click on that, is that taking. There's Denver, uh, which is supplying the lime. It's not producing at the moment which I think is because nobody wants it. But if I put a train line between Denver and Jacksonville to use the lime, then a bit like Transport Fever, it will burst into life and start shipping. It, it does, does look a bit like Transport Fever 2 in the economy sense of demand-driven. So uh, suppliers won't supply anything of any significance unless someone actually wants to buy it, which, to be honest makes sense. If I double click here, I can go into the main map. Now, there, there's the mine. That's the lime mine. So if I can right click, there's edge scrolling, which I like. If I get the game running, you see, unlike the industries in Transport Fever, they're not living, they're not alive as such, but they are there. Uh, did I see something happen? No, did, we can get right close, can't you? Now, we don't connect stations to the industry. We connect the stations to the town which contains the industry. Another new task, you see. What's this one? Unlock Memphis. Uh, yeah, sorry, I didn't even mention this, did I? The rewards. Yes, you get rewards. So you create the rail line, you link them up, and you get this money to recompense you. So, actually, if I go back to that task, uh, San Francisco... That's San Francisco here. If I tab out of here, there's San Francisco. If I go to the produce overlay, you can see we've got cattle there. So they're producing cattle. Who wants cattle? If I go to the produce here, that's not what I want. It's uh, no, it's not what I want. What do I want? If I go, if I select industry there, no, that's not going to tell me. Ah, Indianapolis, right? That's the meat. That's it. 
So what we want to do is create a route between, uh, if I do, if I take the meat off, this. Yes, you can highlight individual industries if you want by just clicking on them. If I unclick, you get all of them. If they're not, none are selected, then all are shown. So yeah, we can connect. Why that one? There's hills in the way. Oh, that is annoying. That's going to be expensive. Bother. We could go round, I suppose. So we want to supply uh, these cows, this cattle, to Indianapolis to produce meat. Uh, it takes three cattle to produce two meat. Uh, now there is, there was a... Is it here? No, it wasn't there. There was a overlay which showed you... Ah, here we are. This is the region. So this is the whole region. So what we've got here is all the freight in this region. Some of it is locked. So if I go to Charlotte here, I like this. Yes, very different. Okay, a down for the space bar not being pause, but a very definite thumbs up for having movable windows. I like that. Thank you very much. Uh, so this production is unlocked. Uh, sorry, it is locked, so we need to unlock that by research, which we'll do over time. So you're not quite sure what's going on here. So you can see all these, yeah, what are these industries? Where are they? You don't know. So we've got two industries at the moment, uh, by the look of it. Uh, Fort Worth wants steel, or is producing steel. That's down there. Uh, that requires coal and iron ore. Ooh. Very transport fever too. <laughs> so, uh, Nashville gives us iron ore, and Seattle gives us tools. So there is an industry chain we can get setting up there. Uh, it's I think from what I've little I've played so far is it's probably simplest to start with industry first, a simple industry chain because then know that works uh, rather than another new task. Because I've been talking for far too long. Uh, Fort Worth to Jacksonville. No, we're going to do the um, yeah, the San Francisco to Indianapolis. These distances are huge, and the way the game helps you co compensate with that or deal with that is by putting in guidelines. So I know that I want to draw a line between San Francisco and Indianapolis. So I'm going to do that by putting guides up, and we can have five of those different colours. So what I'm going to do, and this is going to be on the region map, the close-up map, so I, I know roughly what direction I'm going in, because unlike, as I said, Transport Fever, which has quite a small map, and you know, you can see where you're going, in this map, the distances are huge, and you can't tell where you're going. Well, I couldn't, anyway. So we're going from there, and we're going to go round here, and then along here, along here and then get into Indianapolis. So that is the route I think my train track should take because it avoids tunneling through these big hills. So we're going to take that off. We're going to double click down here and that is San Francisco which gives us our cattle. Now let's put down a station. Uh, so we're going to put a station in and we're going to add a station and we've got different types of station here we've got a, tra a passenger station or we've got freight stations yes I know it's too far away stop telling me off we've got a global freight station which takes and ships pretty much everything now the beauty of this particular freight station and it cost me 125,000 almost regardless of where I place it yeah uh, I don't see the price of it changing. The benefit of this one is it's expandable. Whereas, if you go for a more specific freight station, which only takes or handles certain types of cargo, then they cost you a lot less. 30 grand, you see, compared to 125. Yep, they, but they take much more limited cargo, and they only have one terminal, whereas this one can be expanded. You can add more terminals to it. I'm going to go cheap to start with because I don't know how much all this is going to cost me because that route looks long and difficult. So we're going to go, we want cattle, uh, which this one does. 
you don't put it by wherever the industry is. You put it somewhere within the radius of the town and the freight magically gets there. Now the thing about freight stations is they work kind of properly. You have to go in and through and come out the other side of a freight station. No, none of that magic turning the train around that you get in Transport Fever, for example, uh, which happens for passenger routes, to be honest. So, yeah, uh, freight routes, you do have to have a loop to get in and out. So we're going to place this one, I think. Uh, if I have the control key down, as it tells me, it told me somewhere, a control to rotate it. And once I'm happy with the placement, should we place it, place it like that, I think. A bit towards the edge, so we've got a way of looping. I hope I've got enough space to loop there. So we'll click and click on confirm. Okay. And we're going to draw some track. And I'm going to draw it out from here. You see it's got the line through. Yeah, you don't get that on passenger, passenger stations. So we're going to draw this out. Zoom out as far as we can. And you can only draw in sm smallish segments. The beauty of this is you can see where it's going and you can see on that big panel on the left hand side how much it's going to cost and also the inclination of the track, how the slope of it. So you can get an idea of how much your train's speed will be affected by the route you're taking. That's inclined quite a lot. So I'd like it to be inclined somewhat less. 1.0, is that the best we're going to get? It is, and it's relatively cheap going that way. Now if I, there is a way, ah, it's the, is it the A here? You can actually, ah, yes, you can adjust the slope yourself by clicking on the A. So you can either put in a tunnel or a bridge if you wanted to. Which is nice. So I'm going to leave the game to, to work it out itself. I'm not sure what H means. <laughs> I'm going to leave it like that. Uh, I'm just going to complete this one little bit of track for the moment. Before going off somewhere else and showing you something slightly different. Uh, this is the help. This is the, this is the tutorial uh, kind of thing. It, the, tutorial, the tutorial takes you through a lot of this. But this is already always here. So if you want a reminder of how things get done, then there are these short little videos which take you through it. And that's what I think is rather good. You can't, you can pause them. Uh, I don't think you can click to move along them. So they either play or are paused. But that is, I like that. That's a very nice touch. Uh, anything else I want to do in here? No. Well, what I want to do is to make sure I've got room to loop this track. So I want to come out of here and loop it around like that. Oh, I've got loads of room. It's, do I want an extended but faster loop or tighter and slower? Uh, let's take that. There. If I press the space bar, I'm still drawing track rather than hitting the uh, confirm, the tick symbol you see there at the end of the track. Uh, okay, so if I take you a space bar, and then, this is one slight thing, if I put my track under the guidelines, I can't see the track. <laughs> uh, okay, we'll, we'll connect there. It does the connection fairly easy, automatically. So we will connect there, and I'll tick that to complete that operation. Okay, so that's the freight loop, so it comes back from uh, wherever it's going, I've forgotten already. Indianapolis. Yeah. So when it comes back from Indianapolis, it'll go around here and then pick up the cattle in there. I'm not going to do dual track at the moment. It's going to be one single line. Uh, we'll do dual track a little bit later. So we're going to go around here. I'm just going to leave it on the automatic slope so it'll work out itself. There is no terrain manipulation as far as I can tell outside of track draw, outside of drawing the track. So these cuts that you can see me drawing here, I don't think I can smooth them over, uh, as in Transport Fever, for example. Uh, okay, so if we go there, a spacebar, 
Let's just drop that point there and then here. See, this is why the guideline is so useful. Uh, did I take that one too far? Ah, uh, no, we'll, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. We'll, we'll curve around. We've we'll got a good speed, 120. Um, yes, it keeps telling me off because I'm, I'm trying to drag it too far. I'm watching the price there. That's that. So that's nice and cheap. There you go. Right, I'm going to carry on drawing this. This will take me a little while, and I'll come back to you on the other side of a sexy video effect. Actually, that didn't take any time at all. We were very close. So <laughs> I just so assumed. I just assumed because I played on a larger map to, before that these distances were a lot larger than they actually are. So I'm going to cancel by pressing C that uh, track drawing. We're going to put in our station, and I can get rid of my line here because it just—it's uh, going to be there forever unless I get rid of it. It'll always be shown on the map. Uh, we don't need to see it anymore because the track is where it needs to be. So this is our destination, Indianapolis. They want cattle. So where are we going to put in our station? Uh, it's quite a big. Is that? It's, it's quite a big city. If I go back to our main map. It's uh, if I put the cities back on, not the industry. Oh, it's not our capital, but it is a biggish city. I dare say it might grow, but I'm going to assume it isn't. So I'm going to, just going to put in a very simple station. So double click on that, take us back there. Uh, and I've lost myself already. We are, where are we? I'm lost. Oh, I, you've got on the map, you can see that little chevron symbol. The point, ah, there we are. All right. Yeah, the scale of this game confuses me sometimes. <laughs> or I get lost quite easily. Right, a freight station. We're not going to put the big... Oh. Should I put a big generic one in? Oh, go on then. It's only 125. I'm sure we'll make this money up. Control and mouse wheel to rotate the station. Uh, we can put you in there. Because we might want to send the meat out somewhere else. Possibly. I don't know. I've not got that far in the game yet. So if I put you there. Confirm. Okay. Get back into our track. Now obviously we're in the uh, the, the birth of the railway system of, uh, of train world. So we don't have electric tracks or anything like that. Uh, they will come. Uh, and if you've played the demo for the game, I think it, it sort of starts with electric. Uh, that, that's a little bit curvy. Shall I see if I can delete some track? Yeah, let's let's uh, remove. Now, what what does that remove? Well, that removes quite a lot, doesn't it? Do I get my money back? I don't know. Uh, I'm a bit f afraid because I've got two million there. Go on. Then. I do get some money back. I don't know if I got it all back, but uh, we got quite a bit. Okay, so let's uh, go back here. Um, overlap. Oh, I didn't because uh, I zoomed out too far. Cancel that. Right, get it on the get it on the end. There you go. Yeah, you do need to be a little bit close for some things, but not not too close. Okay, I'm too far. Away. Um, that gets expensive. I want to be out here. I think that's good. So spacebar. Is that the reason why the space bar isn't the pause key? I think that's the wrong choice, but that, that's just me. Okay, space bar there, that's connected, good. And we'll connect you up to loop, oops, loop around. Okay, space bar there. Uh, yeah, the beauty of using the space bar is you're connected to where you just stopped, still. You don't have to reconnect to the end point. Uh, we'll go down. To there and then curve sweetly into that. That's quite a long way around, and I'll just confirm that point there. Okay, lovely. So that's the job done. So we've got stations uh, which are connected. We can name them. So if I right click on that, I can edit this, and this is going to be I'll call it I can't spell freight. That's a little bit better, so we'll call it Indianapolis Freight. There you go. And where's the other one? Uh, can I move the... Does the map move? 
Uh, apparently not. Oh, there's the end of the line. Possibly. Ah, oh, there we are. Right, uh, so where's our freight station here? So we'll right click on you and call you San Francisco Freight. Uh, so I like that. I always like being able to name stuff. There is no depot. Trains just magically appear, which is nice. But before I do that, I want to actually tell the game this is a line. So this is a line. We're going to add this line. It's going to go from San Francisco Freight. And it's going to curve its way around these big hills. And going to end up there. And that is a good, solid line. So that, I think, means it works. And this line will be called using similar naming system to what I had for Transport Fever. Oh, can't, where's, where's my cursor? Uh, you can't see the cursor in there, which is slightly annoying. But you can move back, <laughs> which is something. Yeah, a slight improvement to these dialog boxes would be nice. But otherwise, that works. That is good, so we'll add that. That is a new line. We've got a symbol there which says there are no trains on the line. It's absolutely right. There ain't. So let's come down here. D -d -d -d. There we go. Where it starts, because that's where it's coming from. So we're going to add trains. We're going to add a new train. And it's going to be... Well, we don't really have much choice. It's going to be a 440 American. Yeah, slightly disappointing. The, the game models, the, the vehicles so far, are very, very American. It'd be nice if there's a more variety. I don't know if that's going to be coming along later in the, uh, in the life of the game. But it'd be nice to see some more international models, perhaps. But uh, yeah, so we've got what we've got, so that's fine. So we're going to add this locomotive. And down here, I don't think we can see here what vehicles we've got, what the cons consist, uh, consists of. And this is our train info. So we're going to add some wagons. Uh, we're going to add, need to add a wagon which carries cattle. So that's going to be the boxcar, which is sweet. Maximum speed 79. Really? Our locomotive goes slower than that, which, well, okay, fair enough. The length is that, the weight is that, the price is that, the maintenance. Yikes, paying maintenance. And we're going to add three, four. Four of those on there. So that's the train. And we're going to call this one the cattle herder. Yep, yeah, silly, I know. Okay, and we need to attach this to a line. It's going to go on that line. Now, the, the, the task is completed. So I've now got my two and a half million reward, as you can see at the top there, which is neat. Uh, this warning icon is still there because I'm in pause. But as soon as I get the game running, yay, I've got a working line. And if we look at our station here, there's our train. Passenger stations will have passengers showing. Uh, I'm not so sure about cargo stations. I've not seen much visible evidence of cargo being stacked up on the train station. So as you can see, you can get fairly close to these, which is nice. And the modelling is, is lovely. I, I'm not complaining about that at all. At all. Uh, if I press the K key, we can get into... UI free mode and if I bring that back out, if I right click on that I can follow the train and I stay following it whatever I do pretty much uh, until I, if you see on the map here, the mini map, there is a stop following icon so I can turn that off so I stop following this particular train but he's going to head off now unfortunately they don't pick up any cargo when they set out, which is slightly annoying, so it's going to make its way all the way there. Oh, look, livestock. Oh, this will be the farm, I imagine, where the cattle be. Yeah, they look a bit quiet. You would have thought they'd be scurrying around hearing this noisy steam train rushing alongside their farm. But there you go. There's our train going. You can't climb aboard, which is a little disappointing, but hey-ho, there you are. And let's get it moving faster, much faster. And we'll get it in there. That is job done. Right, uh, one final thing I want to do. We'll keep this first episode fairly short. 
but I want to introduce a little thing to you. Oh, actually, well, I could do this almost anywhere, but we will actually, we'll do it here. I'm going to put in a little bit of double tracking so I can just show you signaling. So the red there indicates that this line is occupied. So no other train can take any part of this track because there's a train already on it. And that would, if a train did, another train did, that would lead to an accident. And that would not be a good thing. So uh, it snaps reasonably well. So that's, yeah, let's make it a little bit longer, shall we? So if I make you that long, the space bar, and then curve you in there. And we'll commit that. That's good. Okay. And then we'll do this end. Uh, if I put you in there, that'll, that will do. Oops. Uh, okay. Oh, the train's about to arrive. Uh, commit you there. Okay. Now this should allow me to run two trains, or if I had a few of these these passing tracks, I could run more than one train, obviously, on this route. I don't need to for a while yet, but I could. Signals. Signals are a little bit clunky, but they work. Uh, there you go, there. If I put a signal here to say this is the track, this is the up track, is that the correct term? Going to its destination. If I put you there and click on it a second time, I can set which direction it stops, and you can see the uh, the colour of the, the line there indicates in which direction it's travelling. So bi-directional or single directional. So we're going to leave that one there, and we want one at the other end, obviously, to indicate it, uh, it passes, it comes to, oh, it's quite a long bit of track, actually. And we'll put you down here. Uh, that will do and you'll be going in the other direction. That's good. So the train should now take this right-hand track to go up to Indianapolis. I've already forgotten the name of where it's going, <laughs> Indianapolis. <laughs> and that's done. Uh, I've, when I first started playing with signals, I found it quite easy to just click off and I would lose the, the signal wouldn't actually be there. You can also change the signal by setting the edit mode here so rather than clicking on the signal itself uh, can I if I come out of there ah, there's the signal it's down which I think means go if I can I click on that I'm not sure I can but if I go into signals here I can see where it is uh, there right so I can edit it and change it by clicking here yep or on the track itself, on the signal itself on the track. So either way will work. That's still there. So should we follow our train? Where's our train? So the cattle herder. Let's follow you. You're always placed on top of it. Uh, let's get the game. Oh no! I did. I pressed spacebar there. Why? Why? What, what happened then? I don't know. Uh, oh, I do know. No, I don't know. Where is it? Is it back? Indiana? Why was it? Oh! That's curious. That's very curious. I've only got... Uh, unless space does... I don't know what's going on. Right, well, that... Is let's get the game running. Uh, turn, turn the follow off so I can edge scroll. Right. Okay. So it's going to. Right. So it's coming back. Okay. So we'll see, see the signals working anyway. Uh, right. Sorry about that. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Yeah. I, I press the space bar because that is that should be the pause key that I'm used to. <laughs> I'm going to use that as an excuse. You know that for everything that goes wrong when I when I play this game get you running a bit faster. Now this should take the right hand track. So if we follow the train, that's better. Are you going to do that? Uh, oh, you, oh I can't, ah. So putting signals down automatically forces the game. There, you're going down the right, correct track. 
Lovely. And the signal down here somewhere. There it is. Oh, it's the wrong way. Oh, wrong way. Oh, now it's gone to go. Right, splendid. And when the train passes, here it comes. Yep, it flips back up to stop. Lovely. Uh, I assume we get electric signals at some point as well. But, uh, right. Let's run this forward a little bit faster. And what I'm going to do is wait for it to get to San Francisco and hopefully pick up some cattle. And then we'll finish this episode. So here's our train, the cattle herder. Coming up to its destination. Now if, if I pause this for a second. Ah, there are 22 cattle waiting for the Indianapolis freight. Or at the station Indianapolis freight. Uh, can I... So that is being serviced by the cattle bulk line. Uh, which is here. Yeah, that's fine. Or you can you can clone trains. As, and is that cloning the train or the line? I'm not sure. But if you go to the train... Uh, or the cat... That is the cattle bulk. No, that's, that's the line. Where's the... I want the train. Trains on the line, the cattle herder. If I go into the details for that. Yeah, you can clone the train. Does that mean you can then clone the line as well? Interesting. There is a lot of stuff in the game already, which is quite impressive. I mean, I've complained about a few things. Like the pause kit. And the fact that the industries, for example, are lifeless. Oh no, no, that cattle moved its head. Okay, they're not entirely lifeless. Oh, that's good. Right, well, let's follow that train. Where is it? Well, it's going round the bend. It's coming in to pick up those those cattle. 24 now. Actually, are there... Can you see any cattle in here? Okay, let's stop following the train. Uh, there is a, a hot keeper. I think it's T to stop following. I'm not seeing any cattle on the platform or in wagons or whatever they would be. No, okay. Come on train, come on round the bend. There it comes. It's unfortunate because I've gone for cattle, you're not seeing the uh, the wagons load up, probably. I'm just assuming that I'm just, I really should not make assumptions. It's stopping. Is it gonna load up? It loads up as it passes through, like the cattle are dropped. Yeah, into the wagons as the wagon passes through this sort of loading bay. Kind of curious, but there you are. Splendid. So there we are. Uh, we have an economy tab. And this will tell us how much money we make when that train eventually gets to Indianapolis. Is that where it's going? I think it is. Good. We can take out loans. There's a lot more to this game, and we'll explore all that in the next episode of Train World. But for the moment, I think, can I catch up with that train? Come back. Come back. <laughs> but for the moment, I will say thank you so much for joining me today for this first look at Train World. Come back. If you've enjoyed this, do be great to hear from you. There's lots of files around here, aren't there? It'll be great to hear from you. Uh, a like would be lovely, just click on the old thumbs up button, even better if you've got any thoughts about what I'm doing with the game or the game itself, have you got it, are you looking forward to it, does it scratch your itch for an expansive train tycoon game, it might just do that, or if you want anything named, a train or a line or a yeah, or a station, then please do just drop whatever you feel like saying into the comments box below, I, I suppose I could click on the train, get the Get that back and follow it. That's easier, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Go into this mode. Uh, yeah, just drop it into the comments box below. That would be awesome. It's always good to hear from you. And, of course, if you've not already subscribed to the channel, you could do that now. And that way you'll know when I upload another one of these or any of my other Let's Play series. But from me, Ajax Post, here 
in Train World. Until the next time, bye-bye for now.